It's this accent, it's on the same accent that Sinead was talking about. Um, so, or I have different today's are kind of similar. I actually haven't looked at the pages since I put it in, so I have to try to remember what it is now. Um, okay, so, first of all, risk versus hazard. So, what is a risk? Uh, something that may happen or cause harm. So, there are three types of risk. Uh, perceived, absolute, and real. So, perceived is something that we think might happen. So, something in our imagination for everyone that's completely different. Um, absolute, this is like the real danger. So, in this instance, it's the cliff edge in Dr. Quarry. Uh, the real risk is the absolute risk with measures and safety procedures put in place. So, ropes, hammers, harnesses, all that. So, what is a hazard? A physical thing that poses danger. Um, so, hazards are stated in three different categories. Uh, people, equipment, or sorry, people, equipment, and environment. So this helps us to identify the hazard. So in this case of the of the glass that I'm talking about, people, I don't think massively would have been a hazard in that particular case. Um, the environment, no, because we had a really nice day, it was beautiful sunshine, so that was fine. Uh, equipment, yeah, maybe dental, and maybe people's choices as well. Um, okay. Yeah, okay, so risk and hazards of the incident, uh, perceived risk, um, the road, like, the road might snap and off, fall, fall, like, that's just a perceived risk, I didn't actually think that, but some people might. Um, absolute risk, uh, falling off the top of a cliff, so that's the absolute risk of this particular instance, and then the real risk, uh, descending too fast, not connecting to the absent properly, that is, uh, that is a risk that could happen at any stage. Uh, hazards, weather, cliff edge, loose ropes and equipment, so even... Loose ropes is one big one, you know, like ropes, how they're tied up and stuff at the edge of the cliff edge, and someone tripped over them and falls over. <laughs> so, uh, so government body policies and legislation. So, I found this on the Mountaineer website. There is more on the uh, Mountain Training website, which like covers all of it. Uh, but I found this particular statement on the Mountaineer website. So, coaches must be appropriately experienced and qualified to supervise safe sessions in the environment in which they choose to coach. Uh, e.g. Uh, site specific sign off by technical advisor for bouldering, climbing wall instructor for rope climbing, and then this one is the big one. So climbing wall development instructor for coaching, knee climbing, rock climbing instructor uh, to coach on single pitch crags. So Rocky Quarry, yes, mainly is a single pitch crag. So uh, we were definitely working within our, our remit. Um, I didn't actually have time to go out and actually take a picture of the actual place, but you all saw it in the last one. We so <laughs> all know what Rocky Quarry is. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, so facts of the incident. Um, a tree bubble abseil set up around the tree. The yes, asshole tree. Um, I was the first person to abseil down this particular one. Uh, I just have to come up after a leap climb, and uh, one of the only ways to get down was to abseil. We could walk all the way around as well, but our instructor was like, Asher, why don't you abseil down? So we abseiled. Uh, during the abseil, towards the end of the abseil, I fell off the rope and landed on the ground. Um, I reckon the distance was about 3 to 4 metres. Um, the climb was approximately 25 metres. A uh, rope was expected to be 50 meters, it was actually a few meters shorter than 50 meters. I can't tell exactly how much shorter it was, but it was definitely a few meters shorter. Uh, okay, so the outcomes of the accident or the incident. Uh, the foul happened was because the rope was one of two things in my head not tied at the bottom to prevent uh, falling off the end and not hard enough to reach the edge. So that's really, it's really all there was to it. So what, what was done right and what was done wrong. Uh, so what was done right? The abseil was set up correctly using appropriate gear and equipment, and the weather was appropriate to go abseil. And, and then there's also the other things as well, as in uh, we were working in our it was uh, one to six CEO of people on the day. Uh, there's all that other stuff as well, regardless of women body legislations. Um, okay, so when I say um, the abseil equipment was set up using appropriate gear and equipment, I mean as in the actual uh, gear and ropes, like the rope that we were using was a static rope specifically designed for abseiling. Um, the slings were used, the carabiners were used, the harnesses, the helmets, all that, so probably to, to abseil. So what was done wrong? Uh, the rope length was not checked by sufficient parties or sufficient people, um, and the rope was not tied at the end. Uh, so what we learned about it and recommendations. So the big thing we've often learned is learned from this not is not to become complacent while doing any outdoor sport and always check and double check everything. I think we are all in the rest of the this. Uh, so the rope used for the app saying should have been checked by each person who's anything to do with the rope. So this is the way I see it. So the suppliers of the shop, or the suppliers of the rope, the shop should have cut the rope to the appropriate length. That's what the shop is designed to do. Uh, the person who purchased the rope from the shop, so i.e. the college or whoever purchased the rope, 
and the instructor has done before he leaves, so yeah, that's good itself. And then maybe they just they just as well by the participants of the PWA who wrote that down. But if all these were checked, <coughs> chances are they actually probably working on the project. Yeah. It's quite short, okay? Any questions? Uh, you was obviously pulling the deck out there, was it? Hmm? Were you pulling the deck out on the day? Yeah. What, what did he say about the incident? Did he say anything about the annoyed or anything more? Um, he said he, t he takes a certain level of responsibility and that we're all going to step forward and learn from it. You personally, what would you do differently? Would you just set count the rope? Did you tie the knot in the rope? What single point would you do differently? I'd tie knots at the end of every single rope I use from now on. <laughs> that's that's a big drill thing to be hungry. Uh, even like even that ropes from climbing, even ropes from sailing or anything else, just I always yeah. I'm not in the end of it, so I'm not gonna use it. Even your laces. Are you okay? Yeah. Mentally and physically? Hmm? Mentally? Did it, did it put you off climbing for a little bit? Okay, what? Did it put you off climbing for a little bit? Um, for a while, yes, it definitely did. Well, I had a couple of times I was on the time. I'm talking about it, I definitely felt it. I've sort of lost that, but that's why I come back. Yeah. It's only for like a couple of weeks after that. Sorry. What did you get as a bride? What did you get as a bride? As a what? As a bride. Bride. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Yeah.